Hi, my name is Claire Bailey, and I will be going over the reproduction and development, mainly the sexual reproduction of flukes. First, I want to start by stating that flukes are hermaphroditic and they engage in mutual cross-fertilization. It is stated in the textbook that self-fertilization is very rare. There is a variation among flukes, but their body plan is similar to those of free-living flatworms. Over to the right, we have a male fluke. In this, the male contains testes, which are all these branching, which drains into a sperm duct, which is this very, very narrow line that goes all the way up to the eversible serous, which is here at the top. Continuing on the male sexual reproduction, the lumen of the serous is typically enlarged as a seminal vesicle along with the sperm duct. Sperm is produced by the testes and is stored in the seminal vesicle, which you see over here to the right. There is prostatic glands that are presented near the seminal vesicle. All these structures are within a muscular serous sac which is this dark outlining the organism right here. This contraction causes the aversion of the serous. The genital pore opens eventually near the anterior end of the organism and leads to a shallow atrium, which is found in male and female organisms. Going over female reproduction, the female body plan contains a single ovary connected by a short oviduct to the ootype. The oviduct is joined by a yolk duct or a vitalin duct, which is formed by a union of paired ducts. This carries the yolk from the yolk glands. A seminal receptacle is presented off the oviduct, which extends anteriorly to the atrium where the uterus is found. Over here to the right, we have a female organism. And you can see here is the uterus. This is the oviduct and the ootype. This is the yolk reservoir and the yolk duct. And here is where the sperm is stored within the seminal vesicle. Going over the mating of flukes now, when two flukes are mating, they align themselves so that each serous can be inserted into the female. Sperm and semen from the prostatic glands are ejaculated into the female system by muscular contractions. The sperm is stored within the seminal receptacle and then they separate. After separation, an egg passes through the oviduct to the ootype, which is right here. Then it is fertilized by the sperm that is released from the seminal receptacle into the oviduct. After that, it is formed a zygote with a hard shell around. Continuing on mating, flukes produce an ectolethysol ova. The yolk glands produce yolks, which is deposited outside the eggs along with secretions that form a shell around the zygote, which I showed in the diagram before, over here you have the zygote and the hard shell around it. Once encapsulated, the zygotes move from the ootype into the uterus, which is usually aided by the Mealy's glands, which you can see down here in the male fluke, which is this tiny little thing right here. The zygotes couldn't be stored in the uterus for various lengths of time prior to release. Some flukes contain an additional canal that comes from the oviduct and serves as a special copulatory duct called the Lohr's Canal, which is right here. This opens on the dorsal body surface and receives the male serous during the mating process. When you think of sexual reproduction of flukes, there is a high mortality rate due to their complex life cycles and the host location. These flukes are typically liver flukes, which are usually in the body of sheep 
And this has an offset which increases zygote production and asexual processes. The early stages of development are highly modified because of the ectolithosol nature of the ova.